Okay, that's that's uh that's that's okay, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, hi guys, we'll be starting in a bit. So uh, since you are, you are here early, do log on to the link and it will bring you to this uh, Google Collab. So some of you all may not uh, use Google Collab before. It's actually a space or uh, app by Google where we collaborate with each other and share code with each other. So what I need you all to do is to hit the file and save a copy in Drive because the file that I'm sending to you is my own file. So don't touch my file, okay? You save a copy now, okay? So it'll we'll be starting in about two minutes long, okay? And just a bit of encouragement, if you see to your left there, uh, we catered some food. So uh, in the middle, we will have break. So yeah, that's a bit of encouragement for you all, okay? So stay tuned, stay tuned.
Oh yeah. I think it's recording through my laptop here. Yeah, because uh, there are two. Yeah, hopefully everything is good. Okay, hi guys, welcome to our first hacker school workshop for the SAM. And uh the title is uh Intro to CV. Huh? So if you all haven't uh done it yet, please uh, log on to our uh, Google Collab here and save a copy to your drive. Okay. Yeah, so a bit of self intro. My name is uh, Chun Yong. I'm a year three computer science and uh, statistics major. Uh, we are. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm a year three comp science and stats major. Here's my telegram in case you all would like to, you know, you are curious about, you know, double major, you are curious about stats, uh, you want to know more about any sectors, okay, can just hit me up. So I'm interested to share, you know, computing skills with people from other fields. So I see that, you know, in your sign up sheet, um, there are quite a lot of you from different areas, for example, like PSA, for example, like statistics, for maths. So if you all want to hit me up, you know, just, just reach out to me. Lah. Okay. So because since it's the first session, you know, first hacker school session of the SAM, some of you might not know who NUS hacker are. Okay. So we are from this uh, student interest group called NUS Hackers, and our goal is to spread the hacker culture. So you ask me, spread the, the, wait, sorry, spread the hacker culture means what? So hacker in this context, we mean experimenting, we mean inventing, we mean tinkering, and not as in the cybersecurity sense of like trying to, to you know, break in a computer or whatever. So why we do it is because it's fun and we have a sense of accomplishment of doing it. And you know, we believe that amazing things starts from hacking and just experimenting and ideation. Lah. So, you know, being in this room here, we want to cultivate a community that just build things and create new possibilities. Okay. So very uh very idealistic, but yeah, create new things. Okay. So uh I'll go here. Hacker school, what is the whole purpose of it? Is to get you started on programming and building stuff so that you can start on your own projects. So our target audience is for newer programmers, including newer SOC students, and students who are just interested in computing in general uh, from other faculties. Lah. So this is not a coding bootcamp. It wouldn't make you an expert overnight, but it will start the ball rolling in a way so that you can explore programming and explore the topics that we teach you on your own. So we call it an interactive hybrid workshop. Okay, so yeah. So we are going through computer visions and we decided to make it a series, okay? So today we'll do an introduction to OpenCV and next week tentatively, we'll be collaborating with uh, our partner, uh, NUS RoboMasters, it's still tentative, where we will investigate the application of OpenCV. So, you know, uh, there'll be hardware involved and you will see how we will apply what we learned today in the more hardware sense where they will introduce your know, robots and like uh, some of the hardware. So I think it will be pretty lit. 
Okay, what's today's workshop objective? It's very simple. Okay, number one is to learn the functionalities of OpenCV and we'll use Python. And the second part is to apply it to a use case. Uh, you know, in Google Collab on your laptop, if you see, we already have a template. So what you need to do is just follow along and have fun. Lah. Okay. <clears throat> so the outline, we'll go through. Number one, what is computer vision first? All right. So open CV means CV means computer vision. So the first part we have to understand what is computer vision, right? So after we learn computer vision, we will go through the basic of uh, open CV, and finally we will end off with a hands-on fun time with open CV. So we will do a bit of machine learning. We will do a bit of uh, yeah, you'll see lah, quite fun stuff lah. Okay. So our workshop material, um, you know if you are, you know. Yeah, if you are just uh, here, you know, just uh, log on to our uh, URL and uh, save a copy to your drive. Okay. So uh, everybody there already? Anybody have any questions on on how to log on to Google Collab? Anybody has any issues? No? Uh, who is already at the Google Collab you know, website already? Just raise your hands. Very good, very good. Okay, sweet. Okay, come. So just a simple introduction, what is computer vision and open TV? Okay, uh, I have to say the source is from uh, 3243 in case anybody is taking intro to computer visions. Okay, so you see what's the goal of computer visions is to perceive a story behind what we see. So for example, on the left, right, uh, you see apples, okay? So for example, with our eyes, we can compute the property of the world around us. For example, the shape, the color, then we can identify the objects, all right? So after you identify objects, we can see what happened, when it happened, what happened, why it happened. So for example, on the left, we see apples, five little apples. So what do you see? You know, in your mind, you say it's red, it's circular, it has a stem, chances are it's an apple, all right? So on the right, okay, for example, if you are Elon Musk, all right, you are building a self-driving car, you see, um, and you have this image, uh, right? Then what do you see? You see a road barrier, and then you see, eh, the width of my car is so wide. And then you further see that, eh, the distance from my car to a barrier is only, I don't know, so short. So what is the action that you have to take that, uh, yeah, that you will tell the car is to immediately go and turn right, uh, right? You know, you'll crash. So from what you see, you will depict Right, you'll perceive a story and it will influence what you will do. Okay, so that's just a simple intro. Huh? Okay, so humans, our brain very clever. We can tell a lot from very little, but we rely heavily on past information. So for example, on the left, just a show of hand, anybody want to like, just like, shout out, what could this image represent? Yeah, anybody? Maybe from, from this side? Yeah, just, just shout out. Any ideas? How many people are there? Anybody? Okay, got American flag. Very good start. Yeah, any more, any more? Yeah, good try, good try. There already. <clears throat> yeah. How many people are there? How many, four? Four, okay, some people say four. Yeah. Then, uh, would you all like to guess roughly uh, where might this be taken or what might they be doing? Yeah, just throw a random guess. Yeah, maybe they might be posing for something. Lah. Okay. So you see, YouTube, if you look at the resolution, the lowest you go is 144p. But this image right here is 32p, 32 by 32. But yet, you see that you can recognize quite a lot of things. Uh. So you see there are four people. Maybe the two people in the middle are of fairer skin. The two people um, at the ice cream left and right are of darker skin in front of a flag, right? So with just this 900 pixel images, you can decode so much. So on the right, what is this guy doing? Right. Maybe from this, this other table, we all I guess. Maybe, yeah, what is the setting? What is this guy doing? Come, just try anything. On the phone, okay. 
maybe yeah on the phone good try maybe in front of a computer got got a keyboard mouse whatever right but what if i tell you actually this is the image eh sorry this is the image eh actually it's not a computer it's a dustbin then the you thought it was a printer right actually it's a poster then the mouse is actually a stapler then you said that uh, he was uh, on a on a phone call right actually it's a what the slipper right so what do we realize is that from what we see here, right? We rely on some of the past information that we have, right? And we thought that, hey, actually, this is like an office setting. But I realized that actually no lah, huh? In fact, so these are some of the sort of uh things that you know even humans are susceptible to. So what does this mean for us in computer vision? So we will find this out later. Huh? Okay, users of computer visions to measure to recognize, to generate, to organize. So in clockwise direction, you can see from the top, right? is to measure properties of the real world. We can use like your phone, the AR, right, to measure the distance, the length, the degree. Uh, recognize objects, right? You can see cat, dog, dog, cat, right? And on your bottom right, you can see uh, trying to enhance images. So your Instagram filters, you know, um, is to generate, enhance, manipulate images. And finally, to organize, mine, and search for images. So if you're using like uh, Google Lens, I think that's how they call it, or Google Photos, where you drag the images, then they search through the whole database, right? So that's the use of computer visions. And um, the fun fact, or the sad fact, in fact, is that, you know, as humans, we capture a lot of images every day from CCTV, from our phones, whatever. Billions of images are captured each day. But the issue of computer vision is not trivial. And we can see there are different users, safety, health, comfort, entertainment, access. But I think the most interesting is security. You know, sometimes you see CCTV, the image so tree, even humans cannot even recognize the, the robber. And uh, now imagine asking a computer to do something that humans cannot do, lah, right? So this, uh, yeah, this, this is just for fun. Lah. Okay, so how computer, see images a computer does computer have like two pairs of like like one pair of eyes like us don't have right so how computers uh, actually compute images is by numbers so we know that computers are, um, are at least like modern computers they run by a binary system right so actually they are very good with numbers uh, so what a computer will do is it will interpret images as a multi-dimensional array. So what does this multi-dimensional array um, include? It can include you know, different color channels, red, green, blue. Some of them include transparency. So basically this is all encompassed in the form of numbers. And in the end, we find some way to display an image out of it. Okay, so image manipulations, for example, you are trying to crop an image, rotate an image, they are just mathematics uh, in, uh, matrix operations. So for example, my question to you is, you take this array, I put transpose, right? Who here don't know what transpose is on? Okay, very good. So you transpose, right? So transpose is row to column, column to row, right? What will happen to the image? Yeah, anybody want to give a guess? If I transpose, if I transpose, what will happen to the image? Well, I hear the answer. <coughs> Roll, it will rotate, right? It will rotate. Okay. So once you move everything, like imagine your, your matrix, right? All the values rotate 90 degrees, right? The image will also rotate. Lah. Okay. So very interesting. By applying this matrix operation, you can do very interesting things to images. Okay. So what is OpenCV? So now we have learned uh, a bit more about computer vision and how computers actually interpret images. So OpenCV is actually a library, a huge open source library for computer visions, machine learning, and image processing. Yeah. And it now plays a major role in real-time operations, uh, which is very important for today's systems. Okay, like for example, live uh, facial detection. If you want to find a library that do it, because you don't want to do all the mathematics on your own, you can use OpenCV. Right, and it's uh, available in different languages. So we'll use uh, we'll use Python. There is also C, 
if you are uh, very uh, sadist, you know, sadistic, uh, that's Java, that's MATLAB, you know, whatever you want. And the interesting thing is, um, the library actually abstracts everything for you, right? The library has more than uh, 2,500 or 2,500 uh, MATS algorithms included, and they're all optimized, okay? So they both include a comprehensive set of classic and state-of-the-art uh, CV and machine learning algorithms. So all you need to do is you plug the code and you can just use it. So for example, just now we talk about transposing, right? All you need to start is CV2, which is the open CV library, and you call the transpose function, then you will get what you want. Okay, very simple, very sweet. Okay, yeah. So this is all the theory, and now we'll go to the the, the playing part. Okay, so for those who are, oh, wait, sorry. <clears throat> okay, we'll go through the outline first. Okay, so first we will go through the very basics: how to read an image, how to write your image to a file and how to display an image, all right? Very basic, right? Then all right, we'll learn how to resize, rotate, flip. We'll learn how to combine two images together. We'll learn how to crop. If you are a nerd about it, it's called region of interest. Then after that, we can go to the advanced, uh, the advanced part of OpenCV, which is thresholding. So uh, we'll introduce what thresholding is, uh, is later, blurring and smoothing, and edge detection. Okay, and finally, we will have our most exciting part, which is hands-on. So there's facial recognition with machine learning, and we will have image enhancement. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so without further ado, we just uh, explore this. Lah. Okay, so for those who just came, uh, do log on to this, uh, this, this code here. Lah. Okay. <clears throat> so before we start, what we need to do is to save a copy to our drive. Okay, we'll give us a sec. Huh? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, before I continue, there are also two other uh, of our NUS hacker friends here and I'll let them introduce themselves. So there's uh, Richard and Puff will be supporting this uh, workshop. Yeah, so before I forget, yes. Maybe we all like to introduce ourselves. Oh, hello. I'm <clears throat> from the NUS hacker community. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I'm here to see you. Yeah, we will be coming around something guys. Yeah. yeah, so uh as you know, if you all have like issues with your Google Collab, do uh head to your friendly NUS hackers, uh your friends here. Lah. Okay. So everyone is here? Uh hey, why is the door open? Hey, uh, got, got a bus out, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so how many of you haven't used Google Collab before? Just a show of hands. Okay, Ken. So uh, for those who are not very familiar, okay, how it works is Google Collab actually will have, uh, it's a very nice way of organizing code to present to others. So there's a section where you can just have a description like this and also code blocks. And for code blocks, all you need is to hover your cursor over it and there's a, there's a, like, a like a start button like that. Lah. And when you press, it will actually run the code. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, okay, or maybe first, uh, y'all you can uh, read the description as we go along, okay? But first, we will download the images. So what I need y'all to do is to run the cell to see whether is it working, okay? <clears throat> so there'll be five images that we'll be using, and we will be downloading this now. If NUS uh, Wi-Fi is not working, also sound out lah, yeah. Then to make sure that it's, uh, it's working well, we press this file button here, if you can see, and make sure that all the JPG files are here. Apple children, yes. Oh, uh, this link. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, show for, yeah, very good, very good. Take a photo, okay. Okay, Ken, calling once, calling twice, okay. Okay, so make sure all the files are here. So, okay, so let's see the basic topics, how to read, write, and display file. 
So here, um, I covered already, you know, image can be represented as a multi-dimensional array. Okay. So now we have to first import the OpenCV library. Okay. So what we are going to type here is import CV2. And we're going to click run. <clears throat> import CV2 and we're going to click run. So CV2 is the OpenCV library for Python. Okay. So next, we are going to read and display images. And do note that the default color scale for OpenCV is blue, green, red. Okay, but this one we'll uh, care about this later. Lah. So now our first step is to read the image. How do we read the image using OpenCV? We will type CV2, which is the OpenCV library. Image, I am, read. Okay. Then the parameter we need to put is the path, the directory. So now we have uh, CV2 image read. So now let's see, after we read the image, what is the thing that we will have in Python law? So it's a array, right? So it's an array within an array, right? So um, it confirms what we say that, you know, an image is represented as a multi-dimensional array in, uh, in the computer law. So now, how do we display an image after we read it? We use matplotlib. There are actually two ways to um, display images in Python. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, in Python using uh, OpenCV. Number one, OpenCV, there's an uh, included way to display it, but it's not working with our Google Collab here. The second way is actually using matplotlib. So uh, matplotlib works, so we'll use matplotlib. Okay. So matplotlib, we'll just put plot dot image show puppy puppy image okay yeah, simple right so congratulations we have wrote the code to read and display the image but you see this image right is a bit weird how come it's blue color one right and if you actually look at this original image is is you know like like beige color so we realize the issue is that when OpenCV reads the image, they will read it in blue, green, red order. And for uh, matplotlib, they'll actually uh, read it as red, green, blue. So there's different color scales lah, that is uh, involved. So what we need is to uh, tell OpenCV to change the color scale. Okay. So reading in OpenCV is a uh, reading image in OpenCV is simple, but do note by default that you know how they read the images are different. So for example, with one array, you can interpret it in, for example, you have like yeah, you have like red, green, blue, blue, green, red, then you green, red, blue, whatever, right? So now we it's our job to uh convert the color. <clears throat> okay, so now we will use this function called CV2 convert color. But for example, yes, you can ask me, hey, actually with this command, actually I'm not sure, you know, um, what am I supposed to type? You know, what are some of the descriptions? So I'll take this, right? And go to Google, my, my best friend, Google. And then go to the documentations. So the documentation will save you, okay? Then I'll go to convert color. Okay, so what do we see here? In Python, you can type CV, convert color, and it will take in the source and the code. So we need the source and the code. The destination is optional. Lah. Okay. So uh, now we know what to put in. So the source is puppy image. And the code, uh, so the code we can put from red green from blue green red to red green blue. So CV2 dot CV2 dot color, blue, green, red to red, green, blue. Okay. And if you run, you have what we want. Okay, ta -da. But now if we say we want grayscale, how can we do it? Very simple. We just change the, the color code to blue, green, red to gray. And if you run it, you have gray. And as we know in programming, sometimes there are different ways to do the same thing. 
So you could tell um, OpenCV to just read the, the image directly as grayscale. So we don't have to read then convert. We can just read it as grayscale straight away. So ta -da, right? So using read, we just put the color code directly. And finally, we want to save our image. So for example, after converting it into grayscale, we want to uh, save the image. So what we do is, same thing, uh, CV2, All right? We type CV2 and then we use image. So image read, now we use image, right? And we have puppy image, the grayscale image, we are, we are gonna save the grayscale image. We put a path, then we put the image. <clears throat> Okay, we save the image. And if you look at your file, there'll be this uh, this new image, lah, the grayscale image. Okay, very good. So anybody got any questions so far? For the, uh, this, do you need this? Okay. Okay, good, yeah. <clears throat> okay, very good. So now, now that we have learned about how to read, how to write, how to display, now let's do some very simple operations. Okay. So uh, why do we need to do, why do we need to learn all these simple operations like resizing, rotate, flip? Uh, it will actually be useful in machine learning once we are able to standardize all the images that we have as uh, our input lab. So you'll see this a bit later, but uh, now let's learn how do we do all these simple image manipulations. Okay. So now our first goal is to resize image. So most CV models actually work on fixed input shapes, but the true pain arises because our real world data, actually we have image from uh, different sizes. So for example, your phone maybe takes images in 4K, other people's phone takes images in 2K resolution. So different resolutions, then how are we gonna train our model with different resolutions, right? So we have to resize it. So there are different uh, functions right to to uh, resize our images but you know we won't be going through in detail so for example why do we need this different function for example if we are shrinking our image you'll have multiple pixels which are mapped to one single pixels because you are shrinking it right so how are you gonna decide which pixel that you want to choose so the, there are many many different uh uh, sort of um, mathematics, you know, that's, that's being used here, like algorithms, but we won't go through them in detail, okay? So now my goal is to resize the puppy image to a uh, 300 by 200 uh, pixel resolution. So let's see how can we resize this image. So we put CV2 again, resize, puppy image in red, green, blue, and we, have resolution. <clears throat> okay, so as we run, we see the y axis is 300 pixels. The sorry, the x axis is what, what 300 pixels, 3000 pixels, and the y axis is 2000 pixels. Okay, so good. We have what we want. Okay, so now we'll learn how to flip the image. So, why do we need to learn like all this? Like, uh, resizing, then like flipping, rotation, is because when we are uh, in the real world, we actually don't have um, a lot of like, we don't have enough image data to for example, train our machine learning model. So actually what we do, we have this life hack. We take the same image, then we flip them, we rotate them, we do all sorts of funny things to them to sort of artificially generate more image for our machine learning training law. Okay. So this is why we need to, uh, we, we are learning like, like flipping rotation and all. So to rotate, same thing, TV2, and now we use flip. So puppy, image, RGB, and we flip. We put zero to say that it flips along the y, the X axis. So X axis means it will flip uh, top down, you know, from top to bottom, bottom to down. Okay, compare this and this. Right, top down. Now, if you say, hey, actually, I don't want to rotate top down, I want to rotate left, right, cut out. Also, can. Okay, just change it to one. And there's another function to sort of 
rotate it around X and Y at the same time. Lah. But this one, I can uh, uh, leave it as an exercise for you. Okay. So now we have learned how to rotate, flip. Okay. Now let's do something a bit more uh, involved. So now let's learn how to blend two images together, how to merge two images. So we can use this function called add weighted. Uh, it will return, um, you know, an image, you know, a multi-dimensional image uh, array that represents, you know, these two images together. Lah. And the mathematics behind it is actually very simple. All you need is the numbers from the first array and the number of the second array, you just add them together, then you will have both at the same, you know, in the same image already. Lah. Okay. So now we run this code to read the, the second image that we want to merge, which is the children image. And now we will check for the resolution. So what we want to do is <clears throat> to merge the puppy image and the children image. So notice what we have here. Our resolution, right, for the puppy image and the children image are different. Okay. So keep this in mind. Huh? Now let's try to merge these two image together. We call them blend. Okay. So let's blend these two image together. Just uh, directly blend it lah, without doing any changes. So okay, uh, this one is a bit more involved. So do follow along. Add weighted. Hmm. So what we have is we have our first source. Okay. <clears throat> then we will have our alpha. I'll explain what alpha is later. Then we have our second source. And we have our beta. And then we have gamma. Okay. So our first source, we want to put the puppy image, right? So puppy image RGB. Our alpha, we put 0 0.7. Our source two is the children image RGB. And our uh, beta is 0 0.3, our gamma is 0. So what this is doing is basically what alpha, beta, gamma means is, whoa. <clears throat> alpha means, for example, uh, alpha and beta, what it means is, what is the proportion of the source that you want it to be included in the final um, sort of image? So for example, alpha of 0, 0 0.7 means I only want 70% of the image, the puppy image to be in the final image. So I don't want the full clarity. I just want 70%. Then for the children image, I only want 30%, right? So if you want like 100%, also can lah. But it just means which one is like clearer lah. Then gamma means the transparency, okay? So what will this give us? Oops. Sorry, this one, see at all. Okay, it's a capital letter. Oops. Let's see what's the issue. Hmm? Yep. Oh yeah, true, true, true. I did. So you see, there's an arrow here. Okay, throw me off, Ray. So what's the issue? The issue here is the size of the input argument do not match. All right. So what we need to do is to right. What we need to do is to make the, the resolution the same. Because for example, if you have two different matrix with different uh, resolutions, right? How, what does it mean to add them together? You know, like half uh, means what? In the end, what's the final resolution? So we resize it, right? Resize both to 1080p, for example, uh, 19, uh, I mean 1920 by 1080, for example, and run the same thing. And we will get this, <clears throat> okay? Yeah, maybe this might not be very interesting to you, but you know, for example, uh, one of the example that actually I want to have is, I put a Singapore dollar and then put a specimen, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't have the example for this. Lah. Okay, so this can be an example. Lah. Like putting your watermark, I think that can be one of the example. Okay, finally, well, we'll learn about ROI, uh, aka cropping. So the basic idea between ROI is basically we map a, po a position of every object in the image to a new location in the final output image. Okay, and there's this thing called shift invariance. That means the classifier is not affected by the object position in the image. 
Okay, this one I can leave you all to uh, search about it more. Okay, but by uh, you know changing the object of the uh, changing the object position model, you know can help our machine learning model to learn patterns better, which lead to the generalizability of the model. So what does this mean? Is for example, I have my input image, <clears throat> then I keep shifting it around, then my model will uh, I mean hopefully my model can better understand that it actually it doesn't mean that this image is in this specific location, that means it will be, you know, an apple, you know, moving this image around will also give me the, the result of an apple, right? So uh, that's what the purpose is. Lah. So let's <coughs> display the original image and say, you see this red shirt guy, red shirt uh, boy, we want to crop it, okay? So let's see uh, what is the region that we want to crop. So for example, you look at the x-axis, it's around like uh, 1,200 to uh, 1,500. Then the y-axis is about 1,200 to about 300-ish. So now knowing the box that we want to create, right, we can put it you know, in uh, through code. Lah. And actually since we notice that it's just a matrix operation, we no need open CV to do this, this uh, to create our region of interest. We can just use our typical, you know, matrix operations, you know, so this is basic Python. Okay. So our, uh, we will first start with our, uh, with first, right? Which is our, uh, how do you call this? Yeah, our, this, hey, sorry. Yeah, we will first start with <clears throat> uh, with first, which is the y-axis instead of the x-axis. So this is something to take note like, for matrix. This is how uh you know matrix are, are stored in Python. You know, I'm pretty sure if you are pretty familiar with Python, uh how we do multi-dimensional array, uh this will be more familiar with you. Yeah, more, more familiar for you. Like. Okay. So this is the area. Mm. Uh this is the, the area that we'll be uh focusing on. Like. Okay, so we are focusing on here, 300 to 112, eh, 1,200 as well as 1,200 and uh, 1,600. So you can see the box, right? right? Pictorially, the box that will be created. And this, in fact, what we have. Lah. Okay, so uh, before we go on to, um, you know, more, to uh, more interesting topics, okay, we will prepare for a bit of break time. So uh, do have a water break um, and stuff, and we have catered food for you all. So please do uh, form a queue to collect uh, your, your stuff there. We have eclair, we have fruit tarts. So yeah, first come first off. Uh, I think we have enough for everybody, so please be our guest. And I think, yeah, we can continue at like, I don't know, 7.45 or whenever you're ready. Lah. Okay. Hmm. The guy there that was um, looking for me for the first half, so he can't be there. Oh, all right. So what do we do? Do we just send him the cooking pizza with him? No, after the answer. But I want to stop it. You don't need yeah, to bring him in after all. Sorry, can I shoot? Oh yes, sorry, can I shoot that code again because it's a bit fast or uh, I didn't mm -hmm. make this across it. Right? Can I check the desktop? Yeah. So, um, are you familiar with the matrix? Yeah. Like, so, like, for example, um, you have like, yeah. Maybe if you write an example, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I 
So for example, um, so this is what the computer is. So very generally, for example, if we want a like a of if a value of one. So for example, value of one represents this. So how about this thing? Yeah. So for example, uh, So imagine this on a bigger scale. Imagine all this as one pixel in itself, right? Can you see the location? Oh, oh. Yeah, so it's not a location. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we should have a different image. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least I'm sure I just do, you know, maybe an uh, important caveat that I'm going to put in that um, the principles that you just mentioned just now, it's a very simple uh, generalization of the mathematics model. Because uh, in open CD, actually, when you put your first motion, what I was doing is great green blue, and we'll go the other way around. So, uh, red, bar, red, blue, green, red. So that means you can see the amount of so that is your So I'm to the I think, yeah, it's everything that is not correct. So for the So it's for yeah, it's also just even just the value of 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 so I think it's very good for you. Of course, it's really just mathematics when it comes to So you can switch all the so it's this this is the part of the software, but I think it's a positive Yes, slightly degrees. And it's definitely also in this direction, which is far So I like to see the previous Yeah, but this 
Oh, since yes, then you can get it more times. But I think it's for the whole year. Oh, because you have time to do the Imagine, like, otherwise, if you have one time to do so, then it will change the order of your own process. And for now, there are three already done. You will take them four times. Well, <laughs> Using So, be more specific where it allows us to make a certain angle. But in this case, it's just a very simple example of showing how to make it up again. So the thing which is here is a very general observation. But it's a bit more general, but it allows us to know so about 30 degrees, 60 degrees. But here is a very simple course. Can I just check with the yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, Sorry, once again. Yes, uh, just uh, the blended part you mentioned before. Mm. So, what's this gamma stand for again? I didn't get it very clear. Gamma, uh, gamma stands for transparency, but uh, I transparency of, 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 of which one? Transparency of the final image. Of the final image. So, so the alpha stand for the first image and the beta stand yeah. for the mm. data image. Yeah. It doesn't all have to add to one. If you want mm. to put one here, one here, that's okay. So, so, uh, just, so, so, so the sum value must, must, be equal, must be equal to one. Uh, like the range of this value is from zero to one, zero to one. Okay. So what this shows is just the transparency of the input image. Okay, yeah. so uh, I just report an error, uh, like you just showed on the screen. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I haven't used the Python for, for this meet for you. Oh, I just used my lab. So uh, what's this meaning? Yeah. So if you see here, yeah. you see the size of the input argument do not match, right? Because it's the, yeah. the, the, the scale doesn't yes. match. So if you see the input image here, yeah. right, we have different sizes. So there is, uh, it's very hard to find a meaning, you know, one is bigger, one is smaller. Yeah. So now um, what we're going to do next is we will adjust the resolution. So these two lines is just to um, change the resolution to uh, the same resolution now. Yeah. So you can change this to whatever you uh, would like. Then after you have the same resolution. So this is your so so this is your pixels value, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we, we are able to run this this image. I got it. Thank you. Just uh, maybe uh, okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. Let's just take picture of this conversation. Like after every code, we can just ask for Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. 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 I should go to the 
And then you can brush like your Yeah. You said you talk about three measures and object detection. Mm. I mentioned the later. Uh, no, he um he said he would talk about three measures and object detection. Oh. Um, next was oh okay okay. Okay, let's send me on. There we go. So I can read. Yeah. I don't know why you stop using it. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, no more. Okay, as we ease into um the 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 presentation again, I think it's just a very good point um brought up by one of our uh our friends here. So just now I mentioned that with an uh an array, if we transpose it, we will get this image back again. But uh, I'll just have to say that it's a very simple general uh, generalization of uh, what the computer actually does, because I'm pretty sure most of us uh, we know about two D matrix. If we transpose, the row becomes the column. But what does it mean to transpose a multi dimensional uh, array? Right, actually, it's a bit more involved than that. Not only is the row and the column sort of um, sort of like interchange with each other, but actually the order of the array are also different. So for example, um, it might not be as, as simple as just rotating the image, not, but you know, the purpose of showing this slide is, is to show you that actually uh, mathematical matrix operation does have an impact. Oops. Yeah, it's, it's actually recording on my the other computer. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for that. But the point of this is to show that um, mathematical matrix operations will have an effect on the images. So this is just a very simple generalization now. So I think it's a very good uh, observation. Okay. So to carry on, we'll have uh, a lot more uh, fun stuff. Okay, doing more advanced topics. Okay, so now we will learn about image thresholding. Okay, so we will see what thresholding is and I'll explain uh, why are we learning thresholding now. So it's a technique where we will have a value, a threshold. So we know that a value, right? Uh, I mean like images normally have a value from zero to 255, which represents I think like eight bit or something to the power of eight. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so it has, uh, 
um, you know, it takes a value from zero to 255 long. So you can have 256 different values, right? So for example, if our threshold is 150, anything that is below 150 will be set to zero. And whatever that is above 150 will be set to the maximum value. So this is what, this is the simplest uh, example of thresholding. There are definitely um, sort of different uh, threshold functions that are a bit more complicated. Like for example, if my threshold is 150, then anything below 150, I'll just let it be itself. And anything above 150, I'll let it be the maximum value, but we won't cover things like this, okay? So the purpose of thresholding is to help us to uh, segment an object from its background, okay? So it revolves around just two values, below the threshold and above the threshold. So um, maybe I can just uh, tell you all, you know, uh, what is the purpose of thresholding. So imagine if we have a lot of images and each image we have, like it's very, very clear, like, like you know, uh, 1920 by 1080. In order to store this data set, we will take a lot, a lot, a lot of storage space. But what if I tell you that I can have this image, I can convert from color to grayscale. Once I, call, well, once I convert from color to grayscale, instead of red, green, blue, I just need just one channel, which just tells me how black the image is. So I sort of reduce the dimension from three dimensions to one dimension. So I divide, the three, divide my tree on the side. And then what if I tell you that instead of like example, the, the grayscale, you need a grayscale image, instead of storing the value from zero to 255, which is about, I don't know, eight bits, right? I can just store it using one value, zero or one. Zero means the, the, the value is below the threshold. One is just above the threshold. So instead from eight bits, I just need one bit. So uh, one bit. So what it does is it saves my storage space by another factor of eight. So from a uh, color, sort of like a, like a color scale image, using, uh, you know, converting it to green scale, using image threshold, I can still recognize the image itself. I can still throw it to the model and let it process, but I can reduce the size by 24, uh, by a factor of 24, okay? So amazing, right? So note that this technique of uh, thresholding is only done on gray scale images, okay? So um, there are things like, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, more complex algorithms like adaptive thresholding, yeah, or uh, where you know the threshold can be calculated for smaller regions. So different regions have different sort of like threshold allocated to it. But uh, you know, we uh, yeah, I don't think we'll be uh, covering it. We'll be just covering the very general um algorithms to help you appreciate why we need thresholding. Okay. So we have this image, the Apple image. Okay, and we really as grayscale. So what we will do is uh, we will play with three threshold methods. First one is the binary threshold method where uh, our value is from zero to 255 and we put the threshold at 127. Anything below 127, we'll put it as zero, means black color. And anything that is above 127 will be white color. Okay, and we'll see what it will give us. And there are two other more uh, involved uh, functions, uh, or should I say algorithms. One is the Otsu method and the triangle method. So what does these two methods actually uh, give us? It's actually, they will analyze the image itself and they'll automatically calculate the best threshold to give us, okay? So how do we do that in OpenCV? So now let's take a look. Okay, so using OpenCV, we are going to implement the binary threshold method. But even though, you know, you might say, oh, you know, how am I going to implement this from scratch? You know, but actually OpenCV has the code for it. Okay, CV2, and we have trash, which means threshold, binary. Okay. So also method, okay, it's the same thing, CV2. We have threshold again, but we will have uh, Otsu. And finally, oh, 
Oh, sorry. Uh, we will put triangle for this. Okay. Sorry, uh, my annotation wrong. What's it? Okay. And then finally, we have, as you all have aspect, trash. What's it? Okay. So the code below is just to, to help to display. Lah. So what can we see in this image? Oops. So we see the original image, very clear. But if you look at binary, triangle, also method, I guess many of you can still recognize that that is still an apple, right? So if you look at the binary method, okay, we can still see, yeah, still an apple. But now we are just using two values, zero, which is black, and one, which is pure white, you know, so pure black and pure white. And we can still see that actually it's still an apple. So if we throw this in the machine learning model, not only does it we uh, do we save the space, but we can still get, you know, hopefully we can still get roughly the same efficiency. Okay. So this is the whole reason why we do thresholding. Okay. So next we will learn, we will learn uh, blur and smooth. So blur and smooth um, is, uh, they are one of the most popular. They are two of the most popular like, common techniques to uh, reduce noise in the image. So what it does is it removes high frequency content like edges okay, from the image. And um, you know, they are actually common processing, image processing operations to reduce the image noise a lot. Okay. So for example, on your phone, if you take an image, chances are naturally they will have artifacts. So for example, um, you know. The manufacturer actually, um, you know, it's, it's not perfect in our camera. Sometimes when you take a photo, um, you know, the, the sensor might not be very perfect. They might have, you know, a bit of uh, uh, noise here and there. Normally for our phones, they will actually sort of process it already. Lah. But typically there will be, you know, just that a little bit of noise, a bit of like um, that, that, that uh, how do you call it? Like, like low clarity, lah, okay? So we will show, uh, what we mean by this. So uh, in general, blurry is obtained by convoluting the input image by a filter kernel. So what does this mean? This means is I take a smaller matrix and I put it over the larger matrix and I do calculations over it. Okay, so that is basically the, the layman term of understanding this law, this methods, uh, mathematical operation. So there are three different methods. Uh, I think we will go through two of them. Okay, uh, so let's see. This is the image that we will be looking at. Okay. So look at this image. There's a lot of noise. So for example, if you use a very old camera to take this photo, then you will say, oh, actually what's happening with this image? There's so much noise, right? It's very like, like very, very blurry, right? Like the quality very low. So our goal in doing this, uh, our goal in blurring is to remove this noise. Maybe, Okay, maybe we cannot remove, but uh, let's try to minimize it. And how we're gonna do it is, uh, the mathematics behind it is, we are gonna take, uh, we're gonna analyze, you know, a few pixels around, uh, like a specific target pixel and find the average. So we hope that by doing that, we can sort of smooth it out. We can sort of like blur it out so that uh, it can remove uh, a bit of the, the fuzziness. Lah. So we will use this thing called Gaussian Blur. We can uh, try other methods also. So we have CV2, Gaussian Blur. We have our, our, our sys here, okay? And we will just put 5.5 .5 and 5, okay? So um, you all can research what this parameter means, but this just means that we want to, oh, we have this here. Yeah, what we want is, the smaller um, matrix that I was talking about, we want it to have a size of five by five. So we are having like a like a a, a target box of twenty five pixels just to calculate, you know, that that sort of uh, that averaging operation lah. So we calculate twenty five pixels at a time. Okay. So if you use higher values, lower values, it's just a, a try. I think to see how it goes. So you see our final operation, yes, there's still noise, but you know, actually it feels uh, a little bit better. Lah. So you see here, 
there's uh, a lot more noise than than here and you see that the image is definitely a little bit um you know more uh interpretable i guess but the bad thing is of course the image is blurrer now. okay so this is what we use it for okay so we the last uh, part is on age detection so it's just an image of points where the brightness changes dramatically and has a number of like discontinuities. Lah. So for example, the Apple image that I show, at the edge of the Apple, right, you can see the edge of the Apple and then see that it is circular, right? So um, that's how we interpret an edge of an object, lah, right? So uh, edge detection is very useful for us to extract the feature of an image. So for example, the example that I um, mentioned, like an apple, if you just trace the edge, you see it's eh, sort of roughly circular. Then from the edge, you can see roughly one stem with the leaf. Then that's all pretty much all you need to know, right? Yeah, uh, to identify the, the image. Okay, so uh, let's have the same example of an apple. We will use an algorithm here, mathematical algorithm, to trace the edge of this apple image. Okay, so do follow along with me. CV2, we will use this algorithm called the, the Kenny algorithm. All right. We will use our Apple grayscale image. Okay, then we will have our different thresholds. Okay, so ta -da, this is what we will get. So using this algorithm, it successfully traced out the edge of the Apple. Of course, it's not 100%. Uh, you can see there are some spots in the middle where they, they think that you know that might be an edge. But what if you throw this into a machine learning model? They can still understand that this is an apple, right? So using this, it's just like another method like trash holding. You have your pure black, you have your pure white. And using the, 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 the white color lines, they use it to trace the edge, right? And you can use this to show in your machine learning model to interpret images, okay? Okay, so now let's have a bit of uh, hands-on. So the first part will be uh, facial recognition using, machi using machine learning, where we will use a pre-trained model and open CV to do facial recognition, okay? Uh, it's, it's quite interesting, right? it's a bit hands-on, so uh, you all can take a look. And the second part will be on uh, document scanning where um, this one you all just uh, take a look and see what's the power of OpenCV. Okay. So the first one, I mean, yeah, or maybe I can share a bit of description first. Okay. So OpenCV is uh, actually very good in detecting face and it's actually very simple by using this algorithm called the cascade based object detection algorithm. Okay. So these are already pre-trained machine learning classifiers that calculates different features such as line, contour, edge. So for example, using all this uh, data that they have, right, line, contour, edge, then they can recognize, oh, this is a face. Okay. So uh, from the GitHub repo, uh, let's grab the this uh, algorithm, this whole cascade uh, file, all right? So I hope uh, all of you do. Uh, yeah, I have gotten it. Yeah. So maybe at this point, I'll ask, can anybody have any questions? Everybody can follow along? Okay. If everybody can follow along, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Very good. Nice. Okay. So after we downloaded this file, yeah, make sure the file is, is here. Okay. We will uh, run this code. And this code actually uh, gives us the code to uh, capture image for a camera. Maybe you will ask me, wow, actually this code, uh, how do you write? Uh? It's such a long code. Right, it's such a long code. How do you write? Actually, fret not. Uh, Google Collab actually is very helpful. It will uh, give us some of the, how to say, um, more commonly used codes. Lah. So if you go to insert, you go to code snippets, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, sort of like um, code that they have already written and optimized for us. So we want camera capture, right? So when we press plus, right, it will just sum this whole thing uh, into our code. Uh. Okay. So yeah. So this is how I, I get my code from. Uh. This is where I get my code from. 
Uh, okay. Yeah. So just let you know that. Uh, oh. okay. Yeah. Just let you know this is not the the, the code that I've uh, written lah. Huh? Okay. It's uh, by by Google one. So I just run the code. And uh, run this code. Okay. So you need camera. Oh, don't have video source. Okay, maybe I can try from my the other computer. Okay, it doesn't have a webcam here. Yeah, but hopefully you all can give me a try. Okay, uh, maybe I can try on my the other computer. Huh? Let's see. Huh? I share screen. Okay. Okay, for this part, if you all have any questions, please uh, sound over. Yes. Yeah. So I hear that uh, some of you who might have multiple cameras on your laptop might have issues with it. Uh, but yeah, maybe after the session, if you like to see how you, you know, um, how to use this code to fit your computer, you know, you can just approach us after the, the session. Lah. Okay. Oops. Yeah, on my video. Okay. So you all should have this, right? That all you need is to press capture. Okay. Okay, very good. That you will save into photo. Okay. So the next code is or uh, OpenCV comes with this pre-trained cascade file, right? So uh, we have already downloaded it here. And then um, there's this function that we have written is to uh, detect face, right? So all we need to do is, as what you learn, read the image, detect face, convert the color into uh, RGB, and then just plot the results, okay? Oops, I haven't downloaded the file yet. And I also need to import the file. I import the libraries. Okay. 
Okay. So now that I run the file. Okay, it detect my face. So do give it a try. See whether it successfully, you know, detect your face. Yeah, this is pretty fun. Oops. Uh, wait, uh, sorry, uh. I should take a look at here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, uh, for this part, uh, I haven't gone through with you all yet. So, okay, let's see. What's the part for this? CV2 dot cascade. Class C file. Then here is your, your cascade file. I just copy. Okay, good. Then next, we want to define this defect, uh, detect face uh, function. So what it does is, it will detect the face using the our algorithm and it will add a rectangle to it. So we'll use open CV rectangle to our face. So we use CV2 dot rectangle. Okay. It will take our face image. Okay. So it's the original face image. CXY. Okay, so what this um algorithm actually gives us is all the all the rectangles, all the coordinates where uh, our face are. So what we want to do is to draw a rectangle on it. Okay. So they've already given us the x, y, and the width and height. So it's literally the whole entire rectangle. Lah. Okay. So x and y is the starting, the, the origin. Right. And the start point plus the width and the start point plus the height. Okay. And we want two five five two five five two five five, which tells us which tells the the computer um you know we want it white la, white color the box to be white color la. okay, and then yeah ten so it's the line thickness, okay so if you see our documentations we have our image point number one point number two, right and then the color and the thickness. And finally, return the face image. Okay, so first, open CV read. I, I guess this one needs no uh, needs no explanation, right? Detect face and convert color. Color to blue green red to red green blue. Okay. So if you run this, uh, it should give you uh, what I have here. Lah. I'll share my screen again to let you see what the, the final outcome should be. Okay, I should get this at the end. So um, yeah, give me a try. If you have any uh, issues, uh, you can just uh, sound off. Lah. Yeah, I'll probably be working around to see you know, whether is it working for you all. And uh, yeah, see, see how is it. Lah. Thank you. 
So for you to get in more cases than the in the most I didn't try to just hold this up. It's super close for two It's just I don't know. Oh, Yeah, I thought that because it was a Yeah. Mm. Got it, got it. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, nice. Uh, it's one of your rules. It's always the one. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So uh, as I go around, I know some of you might be struggling with this code. So just check, okay, with a uh, model answer here that you, know, you type in the correct file name, okay? Some of you have, uh, you know, missing A, SQL A. Um, do make sure that all the variables are of the correct name also. Yeah, and make sure you have already taken the photo before you run this, you know, there's nothing, okay? So yeah, I'm pretty glad, you know, as I go around, you all managed to, to get it to work. I know for some, you might have issues with your camera, but uh, yeah, I think this is just a, 
uh, you know, if you see your your seed neighbors, you know, manage to do it. I think you know it's a it's a pretty fun experiment, lah. Okay. So uh, moving on, we'll talk about uh, whiteboard image enhancement. So um, this example is mainly for illustration. So I guess there really isn't much for you to really do. But the purpose for me to put this in our workshop is to show you the power of open CV. Okay, so just sit back and relax and just uh, watch this. Lah. So what about images? For example, I wrote something on a board like this. Right? If you use your phone to take a photo of this, you realize that it's not perfect. Right? You have the reflection and sometimes it's not as bright as usual right? and, and all. But what if you want to take a photo like this and like, like sort of like scan it as a document? How does OpenCV do it? You know, so you know, image whiteboards generally have less contrast, lower brightness, as uh, they will have been if they are captured, uh, you know, under normal room light conditions. So, for example, if you use this, uh, you you sort of like capture this on your mobile phone, or uh, if you capture this like using a, a scanner you notice that the image quality is very different, right? So our goal here is to enhance whiteboard images to make text readable and give an image with high contrast and high brightness. Okay, high contrast means you can discern what the, the you are writing on the board. High brightness means very bright, lah, basically. Right? You can see what's on the board. Lah. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to apply different image processing techniques to enhance whiteboard images using OpenCV. Okay, and there are, it's quite involved. Okay, so just follow along. There are a series of six image processing methods that we will use to enhance whiteboard images in this following order. We will first use this thing called difference of Gaussian. Second, we will negate the image, take the negative of the image. Third, we will do contrast patching to make sure that whatever that is on the whiteboard, we can see what's going on. Four, we will use what we learned earlier, the blurry, in order to, to smooth out any noise that's happening in the image. Fifth, we will have gamma correction. Okay. And last one, we will have color balance. Okay. So all these are different uh, um, sort of uh, image processing techniques that uh, we haven't learned yet. Uh, they are pretty involved. But the beautiful thing is that in uh, OpenCV, they do have the functions for it. Okay. So firstly, we will write a simple function to simplify displaying the image. If not, we have to keep converting it to red, green, blue. Okay, right. So we will first read our image. So this is our input image. Okay. Um, for example, if you take oh uh, your, your you know, if you take the, the photo on um using your phone or the white box using your phone, probably this will be what you get. It's you know, um, you can see what's going on, but it's definitely not very good, All right? So firstly, we'll use this thing called different abrasions. So what this does uh, simply la, in layman term is, I will take two images, okay? And I will blur one of the image. Then what I'll do is, using these two images, I subtract each other, I subtract the, the two images from each other, so that I can see actually what are some of the minute differences between the, the, the images la, and whether if there are any interesting features, I can extract it, uh, extract it up. Okay. So if you see this uh, feature enhancement algorithm, it will basically like sort of um, extract the features such as uh, edges or other details present, right? So yeah, we have this thing called difference version. And using OpenCV, okay, is a very long code, but uh, yeah, we use OpenCV to have uh this, this, this um uh that's being used in this function lah. Okay, so just run this code, and we will see what how does the image look like after differential version using OpenCV. Okay, then you see, hey, how come black color one? But actually, um, there are some like like some text going on lah. Okay. So now you tell me, hey, wow, how come this looks so dark? Because when remember when we have a difference, right? If especially if the difference is not very um, um prominent, we will just have, you know, like if the same thing minus the same thing, we'll just get zero. Zero means um black, uh, just darkness. Uh. 
So what we'll do next is to negate the image. All right. To negate the image, we can use OpenCV to have a bitwise log. So if you take, I don't know, one, two, three, one, or whatever, right, you'll learn about uh, the not function, right? And what does this do bitwise not function does is basically a, a negation lah. Okay. So negate. So what will we have? We put in our difference of Gaussian image and we negate it. We'll have a pretty white image. All right. So now we see, oh, it's white color. And we kind of can see some details with it. But these details is still a bit uh, not clear, you know? Yeah. So what we want to do next is contrast scratching in order to um, sort of emphasize the details that are in this um, pure white image. Lah. Okay. So, uh, you know, contrast scratching of an image is the same as uh, this thing called histogram equalization. Basically, um, you will have sort of values that are centered around a certain region. What we want to do is to scratch it out such that we can, um, you know, see, um, you know, all the uh, whatever we have in the image better. Lah. Okay. So we run this function. Okay, it's a pretty long function. And now we see using this negative image, we do contrast scratching. What do we get? Okay. Now we suddenly can see something that's coming up. Okay. So now using four functions, using OpenCV, we finally can see that okay, something is coming out already. Okay. But you see, you know, in this image, it's still a bit, you know, not very clear. There's still a little bit of noise. So what can we do? Okay. We can do Gaussian blur as we learned just now. Okay. So a uh, contrast scratching image can contain noise. Uh, especially when we sort of extrapolate, like uh, as what I say, you have the histogram, and if you scratch it out, if you have noise, it will emphasize the noise. So we can use what we learned just now about blurring to blur the image with a Gaussian kernel. Okay. So yeah. So um, we will do Gaussian blur and gamma correction together. So we run this line of code. We blur the image. We will get. Uh, image with less noise, even though you might not be able to see uh, here, but if you save the image and you actually zoom in, you'll see that uh, it's uh, much better. Lah. Then after that, we will have a uh, gamma correction. Okay. And then finally, uh, we will do another round of contrast scratching to just finalize our image. Lah. So uh, we call it color balance. Okay. Um, yeah, basically it's just to to spruce up our images. So we run this line of code. And ta -da, we have this. So what do we see? We have run six different operations. And these six different operations are definitely not easy. But we see that using Python, uh, using OpenCV in Python, we have converted what's our original, our original line, of, uh, our original image is this okay so so to we cannot even see anything after applying six different operations all right we are able to get this okay using open cv all right so i hope you know this inspire you all to uh, further explore open cv and realize you know how powerful uh, it is now. so you know uh, computer vision is more than just about machine learning ai i know that's like pretty much the hype but they can be down to the very simplest things like how do I use a, my computer to enhance images to automatically you know have things like this because after um writing all this code actually now I can build my own sort of app to scan images for example so it's very interesting right that now using all this line of code and open CD, I can you know create an interesting solutions like this so yeah hopefully that uh, inspire your bit lah. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much the end of our hands-on learning section and we'll go back to our slides. Okay. So to conclude, what did we learn today? Okay, we learned pretty much a lot. So we learned the basics, how to read, write, display, how to resize, rotate, flip, blend, uh, you know, have uh, crop, you know, region of interest. And I mentioned that why we need to learn all these basics 
Uh, not only is, is it because you know we want to uh, these are very essential to have to build our final product, but it's also very useful for AI and ML. So for example, I'm pretty sure the facial detection AI actually uses um, you know, at least a combination of all these techniques to train your model to make it such that you know, even if your face is at the top left corner, top right corner, center, they can still detect and recognize that it's a face, right? So uh, moving on, we learn about thresholding. Why thresholding is uh, useful in saving space, blurring and smoothing to reduce noise, as well as age detection and how it can be used in uh, you know, machine learning applications. And then for hands-on, we firstly played with uh, facial recognition, where we you know, try out how we can use a pre-trained machine learning model to detect our own face. And secondly, we also learn the power of uh, OpenCV as you know, we can apply a series of pretty much uh, mathematical operations, but now we write them in code to enhance our images. Okay, so yeah, congrats. I think this is just a basic, uh, or just an intro of OpenCV. And I hope it inspire you all to you know, research more about your own. Okay, so moving on, Hacker School events. Okay, today we have gone through the intro of OpenCV. Next week, tentatively, um, we will be collaborating with RoboMasters, uh, you know, where we'll explore the application of OpenCV. And from uh, our latest news, okay, what, what's our latest? 3D mesh embrace of my yep. So from your 3D mesh, you generate a 3D mesh of the, of the region and also the of the mesh. Yeah, so cool stuff ahead. And also for the following weeks, uh, it's just very tentative, but we'll go through things like Web3. We will have this uh, very interesting cosplay idea uh, by, by Richard. <laughs> yeah, uh, there will be R programming and there's uh, more for you all to, to take a look. So, you know, if you think that, you know, this is the kind of workshop that, yeah, it's pretty lit. Lah, huh? um, do invite your friends to, to learn a bit more. Lah. I think here is just a place for you all to to learn the intros and then just, just have free food and yeah, you know, just, just chill. Lah. Okay. So yeah, thanks for being in the workshop uh, together with us. Um, if you all want to have any more updates, uh, please log on to our Telegram group. NUS Hackers do have a whole range of other events. Like uh, what is ongoing now is uh, Hacker Tools. So if you are a little bit more um, proficient in you know, programming, you can visit our other events. There's also Friday Hacks, for example, where we invite guest speakers to come and talk about you know, tech news and all. And on the right, there is our feedback form. So we'll definitely like to hear what you think about how we can improve for our future session. This is our first session. You know, if you'd like to say, you know, I hear from the other table say uh, more food parts, uh, please, uh, please yeah, be, be our guest. Yeah. So uh, yeah, pretty much this is the end of the session. If you all have any other questions, can feel free to tell us. I think there are still extra food there, so please help us to clear. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for the food, do let us know. Yes, more suggestions for food. And Those who want fruit, that one, uh, please, uh, please, uh, first come, first come. Uh. Yeah. Okay, thanks guys. And for those who would like to, oops. Yeah, and for those who um, didn't sign up through our sign up form, please um, leave your email with us because we'll be sending you the recordings, um, the recording links, as well as the final answers um, by email. So uh, do take a look. Lah. Okay.